Hello, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor of 40 years or so standing. Today the topic is going to be Axis and the love-hate relationship that I had with Axis in, in my whole life. I have a collection of Axis that I brought out. Uh, by all means, it's not all of the Axis I own. The very first axe I'll talk about is probably the most important axe to me and it's one of these three that uh, here I axe that underwent a lot of heavy use. I have lost a number of these style of axes in canoeing expeditions when the canoes turn down and you don't take the time to tie your axe down. I've lost them in the snow in places I couldn't return to find my axes. I've had some stolen. So probably in my career, there might be up to a dozen of this style of axe. And I, in my collection here, I haven't located, but I'll talk a little bit more about axes. Uh, and there's one with a nylon handle or the indestructible axis. But anyway, this axe is about as light a head as you can go. And the handle is about that long. So this maybe is in maybe two pounds or whatever, as a universal axe that's neither too small nor too big. And if you're going to use an axe in survival, then you're looking at the configuration of an axe. Of, I like the slender handles. Sometime I shall talk a little bit about handles uh, compared to other thicknesses. But anyway, here is the two axes that would be currently always available. I find that when you lend these to students, you, the ones that you don't want to lose or whatever, you don't lend, you don't even bring on the trip perhaps. And I usually tape up the part next to the handle right away so that uh, it'll take the brunt of a lot of the abuse of overshooting and so on. Seems to make your axe handles last a lot longer. Some people wrap that with wire, which I have done on occasion. Recently, in the surplus stores, this axe appeared and I could not believe that uh, I was looking at this style of axe. Now here is the axe adopted by the Swedish army. This is painted the olive drab for invisibility. And if you look closely, you'll see the three crowns that represent a, the, the uh, purser's issue uh, of the of this uh, Swedish army. And here it is, the axe that uh, is the most common. And I think there's been a big change in what goes on in the Swedish army because the market was flooded with these and they were only $20 each and of course I made sure I bought enough to last me my life. But here you're looking at the unworn version. Over here this has undergone many years of sharpening so the cutting edge has been probably reduced uh, <coughs> an inch or a couple centimeters and here's the axe before you really use it heavily in the sharpening constantly keeping it sharp. This head is neither too heavy nor too light. I can't see a weight on here, but usually I'm familiar with the two and a half pound weight in the head. We have many axe, axes here, for example, is an axe head that's also very close to that. It's kind of heavy and, and, uh, and so on, but we'll talk about that. But anyway, this is to me the ultimate. The, uh, I would say that in any description I would give as to the the axe that I would pack in a survival kit, it would have to look like this. <coughs> that is, you got to be careful your axe head is not too light and not too thin on the blade, not too thick, etc, etc. Now we can talk about the rest of the axes that are here. Uh, here is an axe which found the head at a garage sale without a handle and they're attempting to make a handle out of uh, a hammer handle <laughs> looks kind of uh, awful in a way. The only reason that I might know for the existence of this axe is that some hunters felt that to cut the brisket on the uh, on a deer as you're trying to um, um, uh, dress the deer, that you might chop, do some chopping, and this is probably is an adequate size, sort of like a portable cleaver, you might say. It says Master Hunter, and then the number one one zero under it. So whatever that is in the collection, uh, that's about the smallest head. Uh, if the handle wasn't on, probably wear it on your neck. You got to have a survival kit that would be very comprehensive. You'd surely have to have a little axe head in there. Now at one time there was a sale 
Norton brought out this style right here. I occasionally see these, but these weren't designated as Nortons. But this hatchet seemed to be around um, in the, uh, uh, in my experience, the head is getting loose there. Um, and this one here, unfortunately, being sharpened so much that the original hardening is uh, no longer uh, part of the cutting edge. But these axes were on sale, and I bought a, about 30 of them. And I probably have about half a dozen left. But this is what we would call the Hudson Bay pattern. And the axes that I have like that, I wasn't able to locate. But generally, the Hudson Bay pattern, uh, it was a designation here. But usually the axe had an HB, which we will say this is the HB people. We'll talk about that. Uh, but when people say, well, what do you think of the Hudson Bay pattern? Well, as I would say, an axe that goes back like this, you can hold it and use it as a, a slicing tool. And generally, if you're given a choice between a knife and an axe, surely even a hatchet will do more than a, than a, um, uh, a knife will. So this is a camper's axe, camper's axe, camper's axe, uh, camping axe or hatchet. This is the, this is the uh, quarter size axe. Now that is in the realm more of the heavier camper, but more uh, visible in the carpent boxes. The carpenter has an axe. So this axe and this axe and this one, this is my father's very heavy head, very short handle. And he, he had a number of these, uh, uh, but uh, I only managed to keep the broad axe and, and this head. Uh, this I found in the um, section and gardening and and uh, working, you know, trimming trees and so on. And I haven't seen that length of handle. This would be called the the half axe. The this is the quarter axe, the half axe, carpenter's axe. Then comes the actual axe that the real axeman making a living might use. Very slender handle, quite a heavy head. Now in Australia you'll find axes that have heads up to 25 pounds. This is probably three and a half pounds. It also says made in Canada. Now Canada probably as a country had more axe makers than any other. Oh, there's a name on this side. Uh, than any other country in the world. Probably second to uh, Canada might be Sweden or the States. Here's a Michigan. Everybody called that the Michigan. The axe here is quite a bit heavier than this one. Uh, the handles are about the same length. I've rarely ever seen a handle that is as long as this and as slender as this. It's almost impossible to get uh, these very slender handles these days because the axe <coughs> handle makers figure the bulkness of the axe has something to do with the strength. And anyway, I'm partial to the very slender handle. The, um, this one here was used for splitting. And there's a big split right down the middle, so I just simply taped it up. But of all the heads that I generally find, that's the heaviest. And this one, anyone, any old timer like myself, you said, what's the name of that axe? They'll immediately know that it's a Michigan head. This I recently acquired from the, the um, um, Holtz book in Sweden, the oldest axe maker in Sweden. And they sent me the axe. Handle is a little more robust. The head is probably the average type of uh, head for the general purpose woodsman. Uh, the Swedes are ones you might look to. Like for example here, the Swedish army probably spent a lot of time uh, coming up to this size as a general purpose axe for military use. And it just happens that that's the size of axe that was packed in the RCAF survival kits, this size, this weight, and so on. Because generally people who do a lot of axe works, uh, a lot of axe work uh, gravitate towards uh, uh, something that gets the work done but is not uh, uh, overly awkward to carry. So for example, this axe would walk circles around the axe I got there, but that's a lot longer, um, uh, more awkward to stow much heavier head. Uh, you can get by with the other one. This one here, you would be twice as fast, but the issue is uh, survival. This is not a survival tool as much as something that's stowable. Some people would think you pack that in a survival kit, but you realize if you spend any time, you want something that 
will cut up a great deal of wood. <clears throat> when you get an axe, look to see if the blade lines up along the blade right for the end of the handle. Some axe handles are warped. Set it on a flat spot and the point of contact is between the midpoint and the quarter point in there somewhere. So when you ta take any of these axes and put it to that test, you'll find that every axe you see on the table has got that, um, that configuration. Uh, these um, hatchets here, they went on sale because every one of them, this one misses the handle by, by uh, a, a, a quarter centimeter or so, and that's why they were on sale, because the heads were all put on so that they weren't central with the handle, and somebody complained about that. Well, at any rate, here you've seen a span of axes uh, that um, uh, uh, come into play as having some special uh, uh, application. You can see that if we lay these out, the big one, then the next one, there's a handle lengthwise, then the next one, and then the next, you can see that the graduation, uh, and this is about as small as, as you would look. So we're looking at these four axes, five axes that are graduated. Campers, the um, carpenters, the general, the boy's axe, the man's axe. The, um, so this is the full size, the three quarter, the half size, the quarter, and then there's the, 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 the ultralight axe. Uh, that is the standard range of axes that you would judge as being something that you would show preference. In the summer, you want something for pounding tent pegs, for chopping up kindling, for sharpening tent pegs, uh, for crafting, but this is too small to buck up a great deal of wood. This one here would buck up the wood and build cabins and houses and so on, the fastest of all, but it's so awkward to carry, so we go for the one that we know will do most of that work and perhaps take ha twice as long in doing it, but it's so much uh, more portable and, and, uh, and, and sort of a compromise between something that's too heavy or too light. Now, none of these would really be classed as a splitting axe. Um, we have uh, those, but these are basically the tools that you use in building a cabin or taking uh, um, on a camping trip to do the type of woodwork that you want to do when you are off into the wilderness where there's lots of wood to work with. <laughs>